Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. We are back with Carolyn C.J. Jones once again. She's an author. She's a grief coach. She's a speaker. She's an author. So much more. How are you? Woodworker. That's the other word I was trying to get out. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. Aww. Thank you, Jill. Thank you for being here. Would you mind giving yourself the proper introduction? It's my pleasure to be here. I'm Carolyn C.J. Jones, and I do everything forgiveness. I'm all about forgiveness. Aww. Bill said I do those activities with it. Great. You can reach me if you're interested in contacting me at carolyncjjones.com. That's my website. And there's a form at the end of the website the, under contacts. You can fill that out. Or you could email me at carolyn. CJ Jones at yahoo.com. Wonderful. Well, thank you for being here today. There's so much to you. We're going to have a great conversation as always, but let's pick up where we uh, pick up coming where we left off last week. We were talking about you as a woodworker. Hello. Talk to us about this and artist and everything else. Okay. Well, I guess it all started when I was a child and my mom got an old baby grand piano and stripped it down and refinished it. That was the start of my knowing how to refinish wood. And I improved my technique as the years moved on because when I got out of college and lived on my own, and then when I got married, I renovated two houses, two cars, and two boats. I did the work myself with my husband. And then I did my van all by myself. So I had to deal with 12 volt electricity, the water pump and a water storage system, sewage storage and the wood because when I got the van, it was trashed inside. It was a mess. And so I redid it, and this is what it looked like when I was done. Oh, my goodness. That's the inside of a van. Are those cabinets or shelves? Those are shelvings that I built. Wow. And varnished. (laughs) Beautiful work. And what's in the middle there? Is that a door? Yeah, that's the rear door of the van. (laughs) That is amazing. You can barely see my porta potty there behind the left hand wall. Oh, I see. Okay. <laughs> the little white thing. This is amazing. And behind the other wall, the one on the right, were all my hanging clothes. Oh, my goodness. I'm trying to get this the way the camera will see it better. There you I go. see. Beautiful. And you have the lights hung and the picture there. Of that. Is that your sailboat in the background, that picture? No, but that is the sailboat picture that's been with me since the early 80s and that's my dream photo oh my goodness wow thank you so much for sharing that wow now how long did that take you to do six eight months wow beautiful maybe six okay Mm. see we learn something new about each other every week and that was a definitely a new talent my goodness so Do you still do any woodworking and and hands-on work like that now? Or have you retired from that? (laughs) Well, I have no need or anything to do my woodworking with because I don't live on a boat anymore. Although my dream is to find myself in the Caribbean varnishing a boat, the, the wood work on a boat. Mm-hmm. So I still want to go back to it. Yeah. Oh, well, it's wonderful that you're here joining us again today. And um, what did you have in mind for us today? Did you have an area of focus for our listeners on this beautiful, almost Thanksgiving? <laughs> yes. Yes. It's a beautiful day here, too. Yep, I'm sure it is. And you're in beautiful California. 
We are yeah. in beautiful New York. <laughs> good, good. We, we're covered. <laughs> exactly. So what do we have planned for today, hon? Well, I wanted to open the book to a page. He's home. Discuss, discuss what comes up. Okay. Wow. I was talking Thanks. about wounds and doing, let me see if I'm right. Wounds that we have, and that's what the wounds cause a feeling. Mm -hmm. And when we experience those feelings, rather than deal with them, we most often get angry or we resent someone. Mm -hmm. So when you're angry or resentful, the first thing to do is to stand back, take three deep breaths, mm -hmm. realize you're angry, and then choose to do something about it. What you can do about it is start, um, oh dear, I've done it. Start looking at your wounds. Mm -hmm. Start looking at, no, looking at your anger and resentment. And see if you have any hurt, disappointment, shame, humiliation, mm -hmm. loss, or the threat of loss, grief, or fear. Those are all the things that are behind anger or resentment. And resentment, by the way, is anger felt over and over and over again. Every time we think what of it. guys. Hello. What's that? Can you hear me? Yes. Go ahead. Everything that we, where was I? <laughs> <laughs> Did I leave your thing? Oh, something's wrong. Let me hear this. Hold on. Uh, resentment, anger, or you were saying, um, all those types of, in, uh, they're ingredients in a sense to what's wrong. Yes. Well, and so one can do, we can do writing exercises. Okay. To discover what those feelings are that lurk beneath our anger. Oh, that's what I was saying, what to do. Mm -hmm. The action that you choose to take is journaling perhaps, or, well, I guess I just say writing, journaling. Mm -hmm. That is so cathartic and it helps clarify for you what you're really feeling and what you're really angry about. So this is what I want to read from the book. This yeah. activity, the exploration of wounds, was what I had to do prior to gaining forgiveness. Mm -hmm. In my situation, I had to get somewhat clear on my feelings before I could proceed. When I got to the point of considering self-forgiveness, though, I was able to recognize my inner child's hurts, and wounds. I felt it necessary to get beyond them as even in sobriety, things in my heart and mind were negatively affecting my life and my ability to succeed in business. Even so, the negativity was not as severe as when mm -hmm. I drank. Most of the time when I was drinking, I shared my misery ad nauseum. It got to be a habit that, as Dr. Luskin indicates in his book, got me nowhere. I refer to Dr. Luskin, who wrote the book, Forgive for Good. He is a PhD psychologist who teaches psychology at Stanford, actually. He teaches people how to teach forgiveness. And we know each other through a forgiveness group. Mm -hmm. I read his book and from it, I discovered how to live with gratitude in my life. And it's achieved by doing three things. When we're in the middle of a difficulty, mm -hmm. ask and answer on paper three questions. The first is, what is the lesson I learned? Mm -hmm. So what is the lesson? Two is, 
what positive thing or things have come from this experience? And number three is, what about this situation can I be grateful for? Perfect and theme, my, because we're talking about Thanksgiving and being grateful. So go ahead. Yeah. Yes. And so when you ask and answer those three questions, it's miraculous what happens. I mean, let me give you an example. I found out after I left my marriage for another man that he didn't care for me. And I hit my bottom with my drinking and I drank for mm -hmm. two months and cried. And then I got sober. And seven years into sobriety, I read this book and did these questions on my grief. Mm -hmm. And what I learned was the positive things that happened are the same as my gratitudes. And, and I was able to get grateful for them. And they were this unrequited love situation, pried me out of my alcoholic marriage, got me sober, led me to forgive my past, guided me to teach forgiveness to others, and allowed me to write my forgiveness book. Mm. Those are five major things in my life. Huge. Yes. Well, congratulations on all the achievements and gratitude as you bring up is just so appropriate for the week uh for this week of being thankful and grateful it's thanksgiving right so we yeah. gotta sometimes look at the positive what are we thankful for what are we grateful for and mm -hmm. um thank you for sharing that wow you're welcome the art can i add thinking. one quick thing of course you have, it's all your time add as much as you want okay. when we are grateful about something it establishes positivity in ourselves. And so that positivity and gratitude attract like positivity and gratitude. Mm -hmm. So the way it works is we're grateful for something. The universe gives us something to be grateful for. So we're grateful and we have positivity. Then the universe sends us something else to be grateful for. Mm -hmm. And we have gratitude and we are positive about it it's an ever upward spiral of gratitude and positivity that occurs in our lives when we live in a state of gratitude because it will continue to attract more situations that you can be grateful for and that just raises your positivity level wow Amazing. You're right. And we're trying to think about things that are going to raise our positivity level here for sure. And sometimes it's also appreciating the little things around us and being grateful for them. Yes. I mean, you have a lot to be grateful for, right? If I asked you right now, what do you, what are you thankful for uh, on this, you know, Thanksgiving, 2021, what would you say? Well, I would have to be thankful for my home and my work and for my kitty, Izzy, who yeah. is a wonderful companion and has taught me how to really love without conditions. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Well, I'm grateful for my family. I have a four and six year old. I'm grateful for my friends, my life, just breath. I mean, look at this hard year we've had with COVID, right? So many yeah. of us not well, but, you know, lots of people we've lost some friends. So I'm thankful to still be here for the most part, healthy, right? Yeah. Yes. yes. Oh, wow. That? Oh, well, also it makes you think about um, this time of year and about giving back. And it's not just about taking in a sense, you know, what would you share with our listeners as a forgiveness coach? I mean, you got to learn to give yourself in a sense. I mean, what are the things do you teach people about the art of forgiveness? Hence your title of your book. Yes. So I teach them how to find peace when they mm -hmm. forgive. Yeah. Ah, wow. Interesting. Because how do you come out of a place that's so dark, right? And continue to 
live. I mean, you as a coach, these are the type of people you're working with, people that have gone to the dark side who have gotten past a lot. But how do you keep it up, especially during the holidays, because they could be so difficult, no? Right, right. Well, you keep it up by continuing to be grateful for things around you, like parking spaces that show up close to the store you're Mm -hmm. going to. Be grateful for those. Mm -hmm. When the traffic moves smoothly, be grateful for that. Be grateful for that small, lovely flower by your pathway. Be grateful for the people in your life. Mm -hmm. So there it's it's never ending the things that we can find to be grateful for. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that can take us out of a dark space. All we need is one little gratitude and the universe opens the door for us and brings us more things to be grateful for. Mm -hmm. Wow. (sighs) You got me thinking. All right. And to our listeners as well. So you're guiding people, teaching people how to rethink, reprogram in a sense. Um, How long does it take to kind of make that behavioral change and pattern stick? They say three weeks of doing something establishes a pattern and makes it a habit. Okay. Okay. So for example, people that have difficulty being grateful, I invite them to write down some one thing every morning for which they're grateful and why, and do that every morning for 21 days, at which time it should be a habit. If it's not, keep writing Mm -hmm. because it will become a habit. True. You'll find you can't help yourself. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. All right. It's all about changing habits. And now is the time. People sometimes they'll wait till 2022 to the next year and they make these New Year's resolutions. Are you that type of person? Or do I used to be and I never kept them. So now I'm not. Mm -hmm. Are you? No, I don't. I don't ever make New Year's resolutions. I try to do it before because I know the chances of it sticking are slim to none. Why do all the gym memberships sell, sell, you know, sale memberships? People are going to start coming to the gym really hard for like four weeks and then it kind of falls off. I'd rather have a pattern developed, um, initiated um, um, at least two months before to get, even a month before. Because then I feel like I'm not going to give up that much more. I feel more, more, what's the word? Not at ease, more, um, more required, more um, wanting to stick with something. You know, because then it gets cold out of here in New York and it's like, oh, it's January, it's February, it's so cold. I can't go to the gym again. But if you start in the fall, it's we've had 60 degree weather the other day. I mean, come on, November's a nice month. So it kind of instills more drive in me in the fall than to start doing something new in the winter. (laughs) I think that what an excellent idea. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then you, like you said, you can establish that pattern. Yeah. Before like the new year. Mm-hmm. Well, and let then me... you can celebrate it on the new year. Yeah, exactly. Wow. Well, let's talk a little about the type of work you do for those just tuning in. CJ Jones, um, uh, Carolyn CJ Jones, I want to point out the CJ. She can work with you as a coach with all sorts of things, not just grief, but grief is your major um, accolade you help people with since you've been there in a sense, right? Well, actually resentment. Resentment, thank you. Mm -hmm. We do deal with grief. Mm -hmm. I deal with grief, yes. Okay. And the types of grief, people lost, losing husbands, wives, spouses, family members, loss of self, loss of employment. What type of loss? Like, is it all different types of loss? Loss of a person, loss of an event, loss of a pet, loss of things you didn't have when you were growing up. We need to grieve those things. Uh, So that's the loss that I'm referring to. It extends far greater than just the loss of a person or mm -hmm. pet. 
just about anything that makes you feel grief, then you want to work through that and learn to let it heal. We always, though, feel grief. Well, I'm not going to say always. Sometimes, most of the time. Often, when a spouse or parent dies, we feel grief or maybe another friend, whomever, a pet. We feel that grief on an ongoing basis. Okay. Sometimes it doesn't go away, but it becomes less noticeable and less... Um, what's the word? Paralyzing. Mm -hmm. We're not as paralyzed. And yeah. we're in our grief much less. Mm -hmm. Again, looking at the three questions, what's the lesson, what's the positive, and what's the gratitude can help with grief. So that one becomes grateful for the time they spent with that person got it got it wow even, even through that gratitude grief sits there in the background and it's possible to let go see i always look at the, look at it this way it sounds i'll just turn my perspective I look at people, I know people who lost their children. To lose life is horrible. To lose a parent, to lose a sibling. But when you lose a child, that just seems so, so not right. So not fair, so not. And I've seen people and out of their grief, turn it around and they're living normal lives now. Of course they love and miss their child, but it's like, how does that person mentally move on? And there's other people who go and commit suicide who are depressed. They're, it's, amazing how the mind can you never think you can move on and then all of a sudden they're moving on and they're living life and they're inspired each and every day by that little soul they lost but some people can't get through that so yes. clearly would you say that someone who was able to handle the grieving process the right way um and grow from it learn from it other people don't you know it's just it's so sad to know that not everyone can get the help and they may hear you talk today may wonder how they can reach out to you um again carolyn cj jones you can google her check her out on facebook or on her website um but you know and then people who are in that state of grief they might not feel ready to reach out they, they may be scared you know so what do you say to someone out there who's tormented uh the turmoil inside right now over their whatever grief it is I ask them if they want to be a forgiver and learn to forgive themselves. Yeah. Because that can start it. Oftentimes our grief stays longer because we feel guilty about something we did or said. Mm -hmm. And then the person isn't there to correct what we did or said. Yeah. It's a hard subject. And certainly there's the issue of missing the spirit, that person's spirit uh -huh. and soul being in their, our lives. And can I ask you, someone who's grieving for someone who they've lost, can I ask you your take on the afterlife, if you don't mind sharing? How do you console someone when, they, when they're losing, lost someone? You know, what are your thoughts on life in general? Could you just share your personal thoughts? Sure. I believe that there is a spirit, universe, God, mm -hmm. <clears throat> excuse me, whatever one wants to call it, that kind of guides life and brings us things that are for our better good. Yeah. I don't know if I believe in an afterlife. I do believe in souls that they live on and spirits live on. I don't know what happens to them, though, whether they're just in the air or whether they're in bodies in heaven, mm -hmm. whether there's even such a gathering place. Yeah. One day I'll find out. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I believe I believe there's something as well. And that gives mm -hmm. me sauce. It makes me happy knowing that if I'm grieving over someone like my mother, I know you lost your parents recently. Just how long ago? Last year. Oh, my gosh in may and um august of, of last august or this august 
last August, oh, 2020. Wow. It's never easy, but you find comfort in knowing that you'll be reunited. You'll see them again. Yeah. Um, I really firmly, firmly believe that. So when you work with someone, you know, during the grief process, can you explain kind of what you do? How do you guide them? How do you hold their hand through it all? I get them to talk about what they're feeling. Actually, with grief, I use as my um, guide the Grief Recovery Handbook, the 20th edition by John W. James and Russell Friedman. What they encourage is, number one, to don't take people's comments when they say, it's been so long, you're still in grief. Why? And they discourage that mm -hmm. because everybody suffers grief in their own time. Everyone gets beyond it in their own time. So if you're taking a long time, know that what? that's what spirits want what? spirit wants you to do okay wow and maybe you can be helpful after you've recovered a little bit more maybe if you reach out to help someone else who's struggling with grief and yeah. share the things you know okay. that put you two steps ahead of them yeah all you have to be uh huh just two steps. Aww. And that helps bring people out too from yeah. their group when we help others. That's what it's all about. It is. Helping others. And let me ask you, do you have any plans for Thanksgiving on Thursday? Well, there was talk by me <laughs> that I might go to the local nursing facility and visit people who don't Aww. have family. Beautiful. Spread your joy and cheer. And I'm sure people there would be a thrill to have you. You know, brighten so many people's days. And you never know what comes out of that, right? Your next book, your next client. <laughs> and That's what right. it's going to do to you. Make you feel good. You have people, yeah, people that love you. You, you know, it's part of life. I used to volunteer at a church every year. Since I had Ooh. kids, I haven't been able to. But that's what I used to spend my Thanksgivings doing. This year I'm working. I have the kids, but I want to get back to that as soon as I can get my kids a little older. It makes you feel so good that you're doing good. Oh, thank you. Well, thank you. Carolyn, CJ Jones, uh, we are out of time. Would you mind sharing with our listeners the best way to contact you? There is a contact form on my website at www.carolyncjjones.com. Or you could email her and you could email me at Carolyn CJ Jones at yahoo.com. And I'll respond. I do respond. Our listeners out there, we want to thank you for your time today and happy Thanksgiving to you. Yes. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Happy Thanksgiving, Jill. Happy Thanksgiving, Miss Carolyn. You have a great day and really blessings to you and to everyone. And we'll see you right here next week. Yes. Enjoy the yes. holiday. Have a great yes. day and thank you and good luck and enjoy your new friends that you're going to meet. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. For nearly 2,000 severely injured veterans, everyday life has become filled with barriers. Day-to-day -day simple tasks can become pretty daunting. I have to carry my chair up two flights of steps or have somebody do it for me. What scares me the most is just the falling. When I'm struggling with my house, I think, you know, to have that one great barrier just knocked down, I mean, it's... It's crucial. Home for Our Troops is a wonderful nonprofit that builds a mortgage free, fully adaptive, handicap accessible house. And there's no catch. It'll be our very first home. 
that we've ever owned. This is a game changer. This is where your life begins again. We need you to join us in completing this important mission. Please visit hfotusa.org and help build homes and rebuild lives. Because of you, everything's going to be okay.